purpose of this okay, so share my screen. is to understand what we did with our client to build an elaborate purchase order management system that allowed for multiple steps. They are in the business of delivering, I think, like packaged meals, lunches, or different elements of that. And they do it essentially by middlemanning the process, by procuring them, packaging them, and then delivering them to the customer's destination. And the way their model works is that for each customer, so let's go to the customer, they decide who provides which of the three services. So the three services that they ultimately have to provide in fulfilling a request from a customer is they have to source the goods, they then have to pick pack them, you know, package them into boxes and so on, and then they have to deliver them to their final destination. Sometimes uh, not all three services are used due to their a complex model, but essentially that's usually the process. And so on a customer record, they can specify when it comes to this product line, uh, I'm sorry, these product lines here, and in terms of who is supplying the goods, it is this vendor. So this vendor provides the goods when we're dealing with beverages or fresh snacks for this customer. And this, this vendor provides the pickback and delivery service for these same product lines. And both of these are multi-select, so they can come in. Notice also, they can simply say beverages, and it will include all beverages. Additionally, they say, for providing this service, mm -hmm. how much lead time does this, does this vendor need? Mm -hmm. okay. And then finally, when they're done doing their piece, what do they do with the goods? And mm -hmm. basically the choices are, they're either holding them because the next vendor in line will pick them up from you, yep. or they're gonna deliver them to the next vendor in line. Right. Yep. This is what they configure for all of their customers. Now, conversely, you could look at the same information from the perspective of the vendor. Mm. For example, if we go into the vendor record, mm -hmm. we see that they provide the the goods, these kinds of goods for this customer. Oh, very so powerful. So you define it at the customer level, but by doing it, you're creating a cross-reference relationship and then they can see from the vendor who they're doing that to for everybody and, and exactly. what all they're playing. Exactly. So then once you define this, whenever you create a sales order, the system automatically goes and looks up all of this information and puts it as additional columns on the sales order. So for example, here's a sales order, and when it was saved, the script went out and said, aha, well, the goods for this line is gonna be provided by this vendor. And then this vendor will pick pack them, and this vendor will deliver them, and so on. Mm. So it drops that on there for you automatically. Mm -hmm. right. Now, if you're missing some, mm -hmm. then what you get when you're viewing a sales order is something like this. Ah, very nice. So you can immediately see that you potentially have a problem. Yep. So what it's telling you here is, hey, you don't have a pick pack. Yep. You've got the goods of delivery, and again, or the problems could be much more elaborate, right? Maybe you didn't define anything in this case. So again, you, you see very conveniently what is missing and whether that's really a problem. And sometimes they intentionally don't have vendors for certain. Right, products. so they, they're planning it, but they don't have it yet. And so this is, this is helping you understand if you have a delivery, if you're gonna have a delivery problem or fulfillment e problem. Exactly. Once they have these orders and they're approved, they then use the screen to actually transform these orders into purchase orders because all of this was really about that. I have orders for customers, and I want to process these X orders. So the script uses all of this information to figure out how many purchase orders does it need, to which vendor, by what date must they do what, and so on. That's all the heavy lift. The screen for that, the screen looks like this. It shows them all of the orders that have been approved but not yet processed. They see the customer, and then they see the items, and they see what's being ordered, and so on. Yep. Plus, they see from the order the configuration, the goods, pick back and delivery. And you can see none of them right now have some. Got it. But if it, ha if, if it was properly ready, we would have seen the goods pick back and so forth because it's t helping you understand how the target POs are going to get generated. 
Exactly. And so then what happens is, let's just pick this one here. And you could, of course, pick, you know, and, uh, because these are all for the same order, if you pick one line, you're picking all of them. Oh, right? powerful. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. So once you pick your uh, uh, orders, the first step you should do is an analysis, which is you click this button, and that's when the script analyzes and tells you, based on what you've selected, here is what I have to do. And what it would show you is every purchase order that it needs to create, who the vendor is, and when each of these phases must happen so that everything happens in time. Excellent. And it would show you this nice grid. Now, this one is red because it's saying, based on the dates you gave me, this thing was supposed to be delivered on 225. Obviously, that's not going to happen. So that's why it's in red. So, I see. Right. So. Otherwise, you would see a nice big grid. So you could select 10 orders here, and it might say, I need to create seven purchase orders based on who's doing what, based on when I have to back into the time slots that they gave me and so on. Wow. Okay. So it, so it really tries to help the analyst understand the feasibility of what's gonna, what, what they want to do. Exactly. And it tells you, I'll create this PO with this date, this PO with this date. And if there are any problems, it highlights them for you in red. So you can see, you know, the, the, these dates just don't line up. There's no way to meet the requirements that you have on the orders. Yeah. Okay. So, if you're happy with this, and of course you can keep, you can uh, check, recheck, and refresh this, and it will regenerate that summary. Yeah, exactly. Once you're happy, you click this button, and off it goes. So it, in the background, runs scripts to produce the final purchase orders. Yeah, it makes sense. So let's look at a couple of these purchase orders that are generated. So here's, uh, here's one. Essentially, here are all the items. Now, if the vendor is providing the actual goods, right, the sourcing, then you will see line items for everything that they, that they have to provide. Yep. Right. Traditional, kind, if, of, kind of like a traditional purchase order. Exactly. If they're providing pick pack service, then there will essentially be one summary line that says pick pack service for 100 boxes mm. times some certain rate, mm. right? And same thing, if they're providing delivery service, there will be as many lines as there are delivery destinations on here. Powerful. And then they can set the price for each of those deliveries. There are defaults, but they can control that. Wow. Additionally, it will show you here that line is for this delivery address and so on. So you see that all right on this page. Now that's the standard item list. In addition, we have a secondary, and this is sort of where all the rich data goes in. It tells you for every single item, what was the source sales order? What's the weight of the item, the quantity? Who was the customer? What service are you providing? Okay, I'm providing the goods, and this is my time frame to provide them. I need a two, you know, two days lead time, and so on. And now it says, the source, where is this vendor supposed to get the goods that they're supposed to act on? Well, they're supposed to procure it. And when they're done, they're supposed to hold it for pickup, meaning the next vendor will come along and get it. Wow. So all of that then is rendered on here. And I notice this thing has 285 lines. Right the, but, but the narrative tells the source and what's really happening with, uh, with the purchase order. Exactly. They can edit here and make some changes if they want. Obviously, they have to be careful because they could throw things out of whack based on that. Got another purchase order. Same thing here. When we look at the detail, notice this line here says this is for the delivery of goods. And you're getting them by picking them up from here and then delivering them to oh, here. Oh, wow. Right. And that's why if we come to here, what we should see is that there should be some, see, delivery service. There is one delivery service, and this is the destination address. Got it. For every de destination address, there'd be a delivery service. For every unique destination. Exactly. I think this is sort of the key that it generates because it is from this that we can render all of the PDFs that need to be rendered and distributed to the different vendors for the work that they're doing. Okay. So this one here is, I think, just for the goods. And so that's all there is on here. It, right. Real conventional at that point. Yeah, exactly. Now let's look at this one here and see how it is different. Okay, so you've got, I think, some goods here. Then you've got delivery. So this is sort of the traditional purchase order, got right? It. And there's the delivery request, and then there's also this bill of lading that provides the dimensions and so on. Wow. And again, depending on what services are being rendered and so on, these multiple pages can get generated. They all look different, you know, 
for the, for the service. Because each service is sort of a different story of what needs to be done. So there's a different kind of request. Exactly. Because even if one vendor is providing everything, first they need the, the PO for sort of to purchase the goods, right? In other words, they're going to go out and source the goods. Yeah. Then if they're pick packing them, they need information about that. Pick right? pack pack is about the delivery them. request, meaning get it ready for delivery. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you package like seven meals into a container or something. And then the delivery is literally just that. Pick them up and take it to the customers. This is what they have to deliver. Yeah. Okay, so this is very powerful because what this says is the delivery request is the go do this. This is now what it is they're picking up. Exactly. Them. So you know what is in those boxes, how many, et cetera, et cetera. This is amazing. You can see how if they want to process 30 orders at once, There's, how powerful this can be. Th this is amazing. This is hard. Yeah, oh, it, it was. <laughs> this was complex, especially with the lead times and getting everything lined up. And, and then sometimes they have to back into dates, and then other times they move forward. They say, well, start on this date and deliver it when you can. Other times they say the final delivery must be on the 15th. So figure out when you have to start sourcing the goods so that every vendor has time to do their piece by oh. the time you deliver it. Right? Wow. Yeah, this was, this was fairly complex. The power of this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the amount of time this, can, this saves them in their, in their day to work, I can't even imagine how they did this manually beforehand.